In order to sell books on Amazon, your book needs to be here on the first page of the search results. And the higher up on that first page, the better, the more sales your book is going to make. And one of the biggest factors that can give your books the best chance of being on that first page is the use of keywords within your book. And so keyword research to find those keywords becomes very important. The problem is a lot of publishers find keyword research either too hard too boring or they don't put much value in it but nothing could be further from the truth in fact it took me about a year into my publishing business to really appreciate the importance of the use of keywords which led to me selling over 80,000 books on amazon and so this is going to be a beginner's guide for doing kdp keyword research to find those keywords and we're going to be using a free chrome plugin as well now, where does keyword research fit in to the overall book creation and publication process? Well, the steps that I take when publishing a book is initial niche research. That is basically deciding on what type of book to create. Then I do the keyword research. And only after that do I actually get onto the book creation itself. Now, a lot of publishers do those last two steps the other way around. That is, they decide what book they're going to create. They create the book. And then, and only then, do they do the keyword research, which can quite often be a bit of an afterthought. In fact, in many cases, a lot of publishers don't do any keyword research at all, which is great for you and I, because it means our book will have an advantage over theirs. So the first step in doing our keyword research is actually coming up with a list of keywords. Now, what are keywords? They're basically the search terms that customers type into the search bar on Amazon. So if we can find out what search terms customers are typing into the search bar, we can then optimize our product around those search terms or keywords to give our books the best chance of appearing when they do their searches. So the best place to start is on Amazon itself. Now, a few initial points here. A lot of people do recommend doing research in the incognito Chrome browser. The problem with that is that this uh, Chrome plugin won't work. So I just do all my research in the normal Chrome browser. Second thing is I do all my keyword research on Amazon.com, the US version, because that's where you'll find most of the sales are being made. That's the biggest target um, market. However, if you are creating a book targeted to a particular audience in a particular country, then by all means, do your research in the relevant browser. Now, the final thing to note is I do all my research in the all category on Amazon and not the books category. I have actually done a video on the reason for this, but one of the main reasons is we want to see what customers are seeing when they do their searches on Amazon. And most of the time, customers do their searches in the all category. So what we do is we decide on what book we're gonna create. In this case, it's going to be a word search book. So I would start with a very broad search term in the search bar, in this case, word search. And you'll find, as we can see on the left here, Amazon gives us these suggestions. And these suggestions are very valuable. And for two reasons. The first is Amazon is actually telling us what customers are searching for. And so we can tailor our book around these particular search terms. The second thing is, customers will tend to click on these suggestions. And so these are the search terms that will be used a lot more than others. So what I do is I take these and I put them into a spreadsheet. So we've got this one here. It's just a plain old Google spreadsheet and we'll call this word search keywords. And the first column, as you can see here, we'll call keywords. So what I do is just take each of these and type them into the first column. So we'd start with word search, word search for adults, and so on. Next, you'll notice on the right-hand side, we have all these other keywords or search terms as well. And these are from a free plugin I've got called AMZ Suggestion Expander, which is a free Chrome plugin. And these are also search terms that customers are typing into the search bar on Amazon. So I would write all these onto that spreadsheet as well. So as we type in all our keywords, we end up with a list that looks something like this. Now, the second stage 
in our research process is that we need to determine the level of competition for each keyword. You see, some search terms are going to be very competitive. That is, a lot of publishers are going to be publishing books targeted at that particular search term. And so it's going to be harder for our book to appear in the search terms. So we want to find those slightly less competitive keywords. The way we do this is back to Amazon. So you can see here we've typed in word search. So we just do a search for that. And on the top left here, you'll see the number of search results, in this case, 40,000, which is actually very high. So what we would do is take that figure, go to our spreadsheet, create a second column, call this Amazon search results, and we would put our search results figure here. And then we would work through each keyword. So the next one would be word search for adults. So we would type that in hit enter. This time it's 10,000. Now you'll find as you're going through this process, in this example, word search for adults, you'll find that Amazon starts to suggest even more keywords related to that one that you've just typed in. So what I do is I then put those in the spreadsheet as well, and also those from AMZ Suggestion Expander. So you'll find that as you go through this process, putting in a keyword, Looking at the search results, you'll also get more suggestions. Those will go into the spreadsheet and you'll find this spreadsheet will get bigger and bigger. Eventually, you'll get to a point where the suggestions are the same as those that you've already got earlier. And so at that point, you can just stop putting in those further suggestions. So what you end up with is a spreadsheet that looks like this. Keywords on the left, Amazon search results on the right. And so we come to the third stage and that is actually deciding on what keywords to use in our books. And for this, I have a very simple rule, and that is I target keywords with 1000 search results or less, because I've found after publishing nearly two and a half thousand books, if I do that, there's a good chance that my book will rank on the first page for that particular search term. Now I say good chance because sometimes for whatever reasons, a book just doesn't rank at all, in which case, you just have to accept that, and move on to the next book. But if I do use that rule, I find that it does have a good chance of ranking. Now, you may argue that, well, those less competitive keywords won't be searched for as often. Therefore, it's not going to make as many sales. And therefore, you're going to be tempted to just use those more competitive keywords. But all that happens is there's less chance of your book appearing. But what actually can happen is this. You target a lesser competitive keyword, you start to make sales because your book actually has a chance of ranking. And once you make those sales and your book gets that sales history, it then starts to rank for those more competitive keywords. And so more sales start to come in. Now, this can take quite a period of time. And sometimes I've published books and it takes about six, nine months, 12 months, sometimes longer for a book to actually start to rank for those more competitive keywords and make those sales. But it can happen and is well worth it. So once you've found or decided on those particular keywords to then use, it's then a case of using them efficiently and properly within your book in the places like the titles and subtitles, which is what I'm actually going to cover in the follow up video to this. So I suggest hitting that subscribe button and hitting that notification bell. So you do get notified when I create that next video, because it is very important on where you do use those keywords that you decide to target. Now, over the years, I've done a lot of research on different niches and actually created lists of keywords for lots of different niches, which you can find in my Gumroad shop, which I'll leave a link to down below in the description. And here you'll find lots of lists of keywords that are actually free of charge as well. And also you find some useful tools and templates there to help you create some books. Now, if you're new to this and actually haven't created any books at all yet, but are interested in doing so, then what I often suggest is starting with a very basic lined journal or notebook. And in fact, I've done a video, which I'll leave a link to here on the steps of creating and publishing one of these types of books. If you are feeling particularly adventurous, then there's this video here on using AI to create coloring books. 
Thank you very much for your time. It is very much appreciated. And until the next time, goodbye.